So um, today then, as I said, we're going to try and put some paint onto our uh, watercolor, oh, sorry, the drawing that was done last week. And unfortunately, because this board is a bit big, I will have to just jiggle things around a little bit so that it shows up on the screen, but hopefully that will work. Uh, let's go a little bit higher, there we go. So, um, my reference is up the top, as you can see, um, the one that we were drawing from last week, and we've simplified it quite a bit. So obviously we've we've taken out um, the boats behind the main the main group of boats to keep it a little bit more simple, and um, the houses at the back I've just done as a very very simple silhouette. When we come to paint those. We may put a little bit of detail in there, up in these up in these buildings, um, up in the distance. But I want to keep it fairly simple, and just keep the whole plan um, around the shadow and the and the direction of light. So that's kind of the idea. So without any further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to need to take my reference off the top here a sec because we're going to paint the sky first. So let's just bring that uh, down there out of the way. So we're not going to need that for the moment. So I'm going to take a big brush, get some water. Let's get some water on the go. I'm going to get my big hate brush actually, so I can spread a bit more water. So what I want to try and do is give the idea that we've got light coming from this top sort of rightish area. So I want to keep the sky fairly light on this side. And as we kind of progress across, it's going to get a bit more colourful and a bit more um, saturated, a little bit more washed out on this right hand side. Colour wise, I'm thinking I want some yellows, I want some um, some blues in the sky, um, maybe a bit of grey. So a little bit of a little bit of variation in the sky, not too not too solid. So what I'm aiming to do is put some water sort of a band through the buildings and coming across. So this top part of the sky is gonna stay dry. And then we'll bring that wash all the way down into the boats afterwards, but we're gonna do the top section first. So color wise then I'm gonna dip into, let me get rid of that hair. So I'm gonna dip into um, a little bit of the uh, gamboge, where's that gone? Uh, or yeah, a little bit of gamboge, which is a yellow, kind of a golden yellow. Let's take a bit of that, very bright, very bright colour. I'll put a bit more water in now, I don't want it too strong. And I'm going to start off by bringing it in from this left hand corner, oh, sorry, top right hand corner, and just let it sort of spread and mix. Might have to wash some of this out if it's too bright. Just get a bit of colour on there, spray bottle to soften that off. Before I bring my, so I want a band of very clear um, light where I can bring the blues into it or the bluey grey. So I'm going to go with some cerulean blue. Let's mix that in a different, uh, in a different one. Oops, it's all spreading down because my board's just tilted. Let's just spray that out. <clears throat> just spray that out so I don't get a hard line there. So as I said, I was going to take some blue. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little bit of um, light red in there. So it's not too, too blue. It's going to have a slight English sort of summer sky feel to it, a bit grey. So we'll start this from the top again, working it across towards the yellows, but not right into the yellows just yet. Going to give it a little tilt <clears throat> as we kind of come down to the buildings. Leave room for that to creep in. As we sort of come down to the buildings now, working that in. Again, leaving it a little bit yellower on that right hand side compared to this left hand side. Okay. 
Let me just move my reference so I can bring that down, right down. So I'll take a bit more water. So I'm going to run this yellow right over this, this main boat. Let that yellow creep down. All the way into the foreground. So let's dive back into our um, warmer colours. Oops, it's got a bit green. Let's clean that up. Tissue. <clears throat> Don't really want too much green just yet. I'm going to clean that brush out. See, I had blue in it. So I'm now going to dip into again a little bit more of the gamboge and some of that light red together. Obviously, it's going to go fairly orange. So again, that's the gamboge, which is the um, the sort of golden yellow. Or if you don't have that, you can use something like lemon yellow. Um, uh, mixed with a bit of um, like cadmium or something that will give you sort of an orangey feel. So let's start to get some of this in. Kind of down in the sort of beach area, but I'll let some of it come up into the buildings. Not too high, I don't want to go right to the top. Sort of bring this down. I can let it go into the boats a bit, it doesn't really matter because the boats are going to be a lot, lot darker. Swish that through there. Just let it come down. I'm not going to go into the shadow too much just yet on the main, main set of boats. A bit more of that yellow, a bit more of the red, so slightly stronger. In the foreground, maybe even a little dip into some burnt umber, which is a nice orangey brown for this bottom section. Do it. This is all on dry paper, yeah? Uh, no, no, this is on wet. Um, oh, it's all wet. Okay, that's yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all nice and wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we wet it earlier. Yeah. <clears throat> So there we go, we just get that on there. And then it's gonna give it a little spray just to get a bit of movement. Okay. <clears throat> and then just before we let that all do its thing, I'm gonna take a bit of color. Uh, I think I'll probably use something like a, a red. So let's take some light red or some, sorry, cadmium red. Or you can use a little bit of permanent rose or whatever you've got. I just want a slightly warmer color. Um, let's take a bit of dark blue as well, slightly purpley. Don't want it too dark, the shadow yet, but just in this shadowy area. I'm going to just start to introduce some some slightly darker colors and I'm not too worried about actually painting the boat so I just want to get um, some darks in here and I'm going to paint it as one big shape so I'm purposely not leaving um, too much of the boat um, Obviously, there's a little sliver there, which is going to be the light that's sort of hitting it. But other than that, I want to try and get all the shadow side of the boat um, sort of painted in whilst it's still wet to give room for that paint to sort of just bleed out into the surrounding area and be nice and soft. Okay, and um, I'll probably put a bit of that same colour through this main boat as well. I'm not going to paint the top because obviously that's going to be sort of grey. But this whole boat is going to just get a bit of a coating of this shadowish warm colour. And I don't care really if it stays the right shape or not, it's going to bleed and merge. But we can shape all that up afterwards. Okay. 
Actually, let's take a bit of that cerulean blue into those colors, that same shadowy color that I just put on. I just want a bit of a darker sort of bluey gray in this background area while the paper's hopefully still moist enough. Let's try it. Just gonna bring a little bit of this up into this area just to get the um, some of the buildings in and also not in but just to get it started while the paint's got a bit of moisture in it still so it's all nice and soft there we go just a bit of color that i can link into this shadow that's sort of down on the beach area oops i just dropped a bit of that into that other shadow never mind and then as we're coming into our sort of sunny area i'm just going to let that um, wash out a little bit. Bring that down and come around. So I'm not adding any more paint. I'm just going to knock a bit of the paint out of my brush so that I'm not introducing too much paint on this right hand side. Just using the moisture in the paper now. So you see, I'm just knocking the um, paint out of my brush so it's not going to make it too dark there we go all the way through and that will do Right then everybody, so let's make a um, start on the next part. So all I've just done there, some of you may or may not have noticed, I've just taken a brush, a little bit of the um, masking fluid, the blue masking fluid that we've used previously. Um, obviously dunk the brush in, just the wrong end, not the brush, not the brush end, the actual handle end of the, um, of the brush and just kind of um, sprinkled that onto this, sandy area in the foreground just to give us some impression of maybe some pebbles or some different texture once we come to paint that eventually um, that will hopefully have dried ready for us to do some work on that um, in a bit so if you do want to do that then by all means um, flick a little bit on now uh, providing your um, your painting is dry don't do that while it's wet, otherwise it's really difficult to get off. So if you wanna do that, then by all means do so. I'll just talk you through what we're gonna do next. So the next thing we're gonna look at is to, um, we're not really gonna put a lot of detail, but we're gonna bring in some shapes um, through the building line and try and tie that into some of the shapes that are in the shadow um, on the beach line, kind of working our way down then probably to start work on, on the boats um, as a first pass, leaving this foreground area for um, probably the end section. Although having said that, we may dip into it if, if we need to, just to tidy up some edges and um, uh, pull it all together. So color-wise then, you might wanna get colors ready as well while I'm waiting for everybody to do the masking fluid. Uh, I'm going to use very similar colours to what I put on previously. So that is the, um, the cerulean blue. And into the cerulean blue, I'm going to mix some of the light red. Because the, the cerulean blue and the light red, they seem to go quite well together in terms of splitting. Um, and if you don't like that effect, then obviously then you can pick other colours. But this gives me a sort of a very light pastely purpley grey. Um, which is quite nice in the shadow for the buildings, because obviously the buildings themselves, although in the reference they're fairly blue, um, I want them to be a little bit more, um, slightly less blue than, than the reference. I think the reference is, it. I think when I um, sent it out, I did actually oversaturate the colours just to make it a bit more interesting for everybody. So I'm actually going to do the reverse here and desaturate them a little bit. 
so there we go so we're going to use some cerulean blue and the light red together in that mix and then i may also dip into a similar mix but more um, light red in it i might even put some um, burnt sienna uh, just to amp up the oranginess of the of the color so it's still going to have some cerulean in there so it'll still be a grayish color but it'll be a sort of a, a warmer gray as opposed to the um, the cooler gray that we've got in this one. So it's the light red, a little bit of um, burnt sienna and um, the cerulean blue to give me a warmer, much warmer gray. Okay, so really two grays there. One's a bluish, bluey purplish gray. And we may be adding more um, blue or other colors to it as we sort of progress along the band of um, buildings, but effectively that's the colors that I'll be using. So I'll give you a moment or two just to, to get that ready. So the way I'm kind of envisage these buildings being is that the tops of the buildings are going to be slightly lighter in tone to the core running through the middle and then it's going to get slightly lighter again as we go out into the shadows so we're going to get a darker a darker area at the bottom and the middle getting lighter as it sort of stretches out that's that's kind of the idea um, with this piece of work that we're about to do so what I'm going to do is just take some water in a brush clean water and I'm going to run it as I said through that sort of middle section of this area just as a band of moisture not too much just a bit might take that all the way out to the edge here as well because it's going to be less obvious out there but we still want a bit of this effect going on so all the way through just a bit of moisture and then I'm going to start to pick up my colors. So on the far left here, let's start off with the bluier version. Thinking about the tops of the buildings and the sort of shapes that they might make. So some are going to be up, down. Um, you know, we don't want individual buildings. We want blocks of color is really what we want. Um, so where we did our drawing last time, where we kind of got these little bits that are sticking up. Let's go a little bit bluer. We want to emphasize those a touch so that we can we can get some shape to these um, to this structure. Let's just take that all the way back through. So a little bit more of that blue in there. So that the color's a bit stronger. So as I said, I want this end to be a bit a bit darker. So I'm going to go a bit stronger in the color just to get a bit more tone in there. And as we're sort of progressing our way across to the um, middle slash right side, it's going to get lighter. So I'm just periodically dipping into these different colors just to get a bit of variation. I'm not really even looking at the reference at this point, it's just sort of looking at the drawing that we did last week and sort of trying to capture some of these shapes that were made and it's up to you whether you want to um, leave the mast unpainted or whether you want to uh, kind of paint over that the mast is going to be fairly dark at the end on this one let's just put my hand in the masking fluid that's clever Let's bring that all the way down. So continuing all the way through. So again, still a little bit darker on top. 
slightly bluer again. Now, as we're coming over to this um, right hand side, I'm actually going to start to put more water into the into the mix so that the paint becomes a lot lighter as we don't want it quite so heavy on this side because I want it almost to feel like it's um, not disappearing but being um, so that the light is is sort of flaring out the color so you can't really see too much in it it just looks like a very soft silhouette against the light that's really what I'm thinking whether it works is another matter but that's what we'll try might need to go darker but very very light on this side there we go now so before that bottom edge starts to dry out I'm going to dip into some um, some black actually that I've got here which is a Daniel Smith black but if you don't have Daniel Smith black it doesn't matter you can just use some burnt sienna sorry not burnt sienna some burnt umber and some Payne's grey maybe so I'm just mixing some burnt umber and that Daniel Smith together so it's a nice dark colour and I'm going to start to run that in at the bottom of these buildings through that middle section I'm just going to lay my board just a little bit flatter so, and again, just sort of dipping in to that wash above it, just to break it up and give me some, some variation, because there is some variation in that distant building line. Not worrying about those beach huts, really. I'm just going to um, put some of this darker color down. Let's run that a little bit lower. Coming a little bit down into this shadowy area before we start to change the colour again. A few little gaps here and there. And again, just run that across a little bit into my flared out area. I don't want too much of that dark in there, otherwise it will wreck the, the idea of it. Um, the sun being incredibly bright over this side. So I'm just going to put lots of water in that, just so it's not so dark. And just run a little bit of that in there. And then I'm coming down into my shadow. So this is the shadow running down into the beach. And I'm going to pop some blue in that in a second. So it's a very simple shadow shape. Cut that one in as well. Let's get a little bit of that cerulean blue in there, and perhaps a tiny bit of um, purple, uh, purple, um, permanent rose to make it slightly purpley, not too strong. Again, just fairly, fairly washy. Just drop a bit of that in there as well, and then pull this across. Bit more blue into that purple as we're coming across into the main sort of darker area going around my um mast a bit more of that permanent rose which is a sort of a pinky red and the cerulean together just to get a bit of warmth now into this shadow at the bottom a bit more blue in there it's a bit too it's a bit heavy so it's spread that out a bit so the shadow sort of comes all the way across on the beach it comes down let's just tilt that board a little bit more just continue it across Bit more of the let's just go slightly more of the light red as we come across here all the way back to the beginning and i'll just take a damp brush now so i'm taking my brush putting it in water take some tissue and just knock off the excess 
And I'm just going to run it along the edge of that shadow just to really soften off that edge so it's not so sharp. Um, because I don't want it to be too sharp along that edge, otherwise it's going to be a bit heavy. <clears throat> Just knock down any shapes that are not quite working. A little bit of moisture. Just along that edge. Try not to put too much water into it um, so that it doesn't cauliflower too much. It's really more about just trying to give it a nice soft appearance. Um, than it is about anything else. Let's just soften this off. It's got a bit hard there. Give it a bit more moisture just to stretch out a little bit more. Okay, and then again, I'm just going to tilt the board a bit flatter and leave that to, um, to dry for the moment. So it's just a bit flatter there. Okay, so again, I'll give you um, some time just to do that bit while I fix my <laughs> palette back on. Let's do that there. boat get some color on him next uh, and again just using a very similar mix of the <clears throat> the blue and the um, colors we used in the buildings actually let's go with that one that's a bit cleaner so it's the cerulean blue the light red a little bit more cerulean blue in there and i may even put a little bit of the permanent rose just purple it up a little bit more. More blue. Okay. So this color then is going to be for the um, cabin area. Now I'm going to leave a band of um, this yellow showing through to suggest the light that's going to be coming from that right hand side. So I need to make sure I don't paint or try not to paint that that um, piece. So I'm just going to paint all over the window. Um, I'm going to wash that out in, on that edge. It comes up to the front of the boat. Entirely sure what it does at the front front there, but we'll just assume it just goes to a point. Then we come round this edge all the way to the back, like that. Now this front edge, I need to just get some moisture. Just going to wash that out a bit. Well, not wash it, but just soften it. So we'll soften that off, 
across there. The inside, I'm gonna treat it with a very, very pale wash, same color, just a very pale wash, but I'm not gonna to touch the edge of the wash that I've just put on, otherwise it will bleed into it. So I'm leaving a little, little dry edge between this wash and that wash, otherwise they'll run together too much. So I'm just putting that in as a very simple, simple shape. Okay, and now we can then get into the reds. So let's dip into a bit of nice permanent rose, maybe a little bit of cadmium red mixed together. Take some of that dirty mix, put a bit of that in there to darken it. Obviously, I don't want it to be too, too bright because it's actually in the shadow. So we'll take some of that now and then start to detail up this shape. So trying as best I can to keep the shape of the hull um, as close to the drawing as possible so that I don't lose um, the drawing in the, in the painting. Let's just backfill that a bit. Coming all the way across. So as we come down here, the boat kind of comes in. <clears throat> and there is a very, very dark bottom to the boat. So we might put that in as well. because that's quite interesting. So we'll just fill that red to there. And then I'll get a nice bit of dark color. So let's just use that same black, the Daniel Smith black, and I'll put some cerulean in there. So cerulean and Daniel Smith black together to give me a nice dark, dark. Although it's not black, it's, it's still got a bit of color to it. So let's just get some of this on right up to that red before it's had time to dry so that the two colors can can kind of mix um, but again trying to keep the shape as close to the drawing as possible now as we come into the sandy area slight color change again so i'm going to dip more into that light red so that we've got some warmth in the shadow so it's still going to be a dark shadow, but I want a bit of warmth in there. So it's sort of more of a brown, a browny color. And again, I'm going to bump that right up to that existing dark we've just put on. So it all links together. And as I come out to the edge of the shadow, I'm going to dip into more blue. So more of the cerulean blue again. And then get some of that on. Again, pretty strong. Because we want a good color hit out here. Now to create the softening on this edge, rather than put more paint on, I'm just gonna take some moisture and just run it along that edge, just to give me a really nice soft, soft edge to this this shadow. Um, and uh, I'll probably spray it a little bit on the edge as well, just to really accentuate the softness and sort of wash it away a little bit. So let's take a cleaner brush with some clean water, really clean water. And I need to wash that right away now because I've got a bit of an edge to that. And then let's just intermingle that into what we've already got on the painting. Just gonna run it along that top edge as well, so it's a bit softer. Perhaps along that bit of that back edge, just to soften it off. And pull that out 
in the direction that the beach is going. And then take my spray bottle, and just spray out the remainder of that um, color that I've just put on, just so I don't get too many lines once that's dried. And that will do that boat for the moment. Let's just mop that up. Give that a bit of a mop. May need a bit more dark on it later, but for the moment, I think that's fine. In fact, before I do that, let me do the wood first. So let's take the same brown that we used on the bottom of the shadow down there. And I'll start to introduce that into this boat here. So coming all the way down again, trying to keep the the shape um, of the wash, how we want the, she can go across there because that's going to be dark. There's a boy going to be in there. We come down and then it kind of goes back and then up and away. Tidy up the bottom edge of that. Okay, and there's a few little upright bits that we can pop in. And in actual fact, I could probably take that same color and fill in the some of the inside. I'm going to leave a little bit of the underground color showing through, particularly on the edge so again leaving a gap between those two washes so that I can suggest a bit of light maybe hitting hitting the edge and we'll take this all the way down to the front and again perhaps just the odd few gaps to suggest some some of the I don't know bits of the boat. Now I'm going to drop into that bluey mix now, the bluey purple mix, and start to drop some of that on. Let's go a bit stronger. More blue. And I'll take that right up to the edge of that brown. Coming all the way down. Go around the boy. So just cutting in to the edge of the other boat that's going to be next to it. Can leave a little gap there, and then we're into the shadow. So the shadow is going to come in next. So there's a tiny little bit of grey. I might even ignore that. Actually, no, let's leave a little gap. And then we'll put some browns back in. So the same brown I used at the top. Just gonna bring some of that back in. At the bottom down here. To link all this together and also start the shadow off. So the shadow is gonna come over to this other boat. All the way across. There is actually some shadow on the bottom of that bit of rope as well. Just going to break up the edge of the shadow a little bit, let some of that lighter colour show through. Now I can't really stop it there, otherwise, I'm going to get a very hard mark. So I'm going to continue the shadow all the way across, but go warmer, so more, more red into that brown mix, a bit more light red, just pull some of that in there. And then I'm going to use that same dark colour to start to bring this boat in. So 
let me get this up right there. And it kind of goes back and then disappears away. The hole sort of comes down. I might make this all sort of a brownie blue color again, like the other boat. Just to bring into that brownie blue mix. Just let that come all the way down to where the shadow starts. <clears throat> so a bit more of the ultramarine. Just to thicken that color up a touch more. Link it all together and then we just wash it all away with a bit more brown. And then out of the picture. So a bit more burnt sienna in there. Let's warm that up. A few little dits and dots here and there to suggest some pebbles on the edge of the shadow. Just so it's not a totally straight line. And then I'm going to get a rigger now. I can find it. There it is. And then before this is dry, just put in some some ropes and a few suggestions of um, some very rudimentary details. Perhaps I've got a bit of rope coming down off this boat up here. A few little bits of detail um, in there. Perhaps a bit of the black in there as well, just to darken it up. Just give a nice few dark marks here and there. Just going to put the inside of this boat in as well with that same brown. Coming up my nose. So let's get this inside shape. Again, I'm going to leave a little bit of a sliver of the um, undercolor showing through there. But the rest of it's all going to get treated very darkly. Perhaps a little bit of blue inside. Just some variation. Keep that little sliver on that inside edge. A bit more red. So we sort of come round corner. And then a bit more blue. So more ultramarine, just over the top here. Just to allow that all to link together. Clean the brush off. Okay. But because it's all, <clears throat> to try and keep this palette on the, uh, on the board here makes it a bit difficult, so I can't really do that. So I'm just going to do it without, and hopefully it will kind of go in roughly the direction that I want the colours to go in. So I'm just going to run a bit of water. It's a little bit dirty water, but just a bit of water. And starting off with some blue first, so a bit of cerulean blue. I'm just going to bring that actually right into the edge of that boat because that needs to go a bit bluer. Let's just run a bit of water kind of through this area. Perhaps we can take it right over to the other boat. Let's give it some direction. So it's sort of going at a slight angle. And then we'll run that all the way through more blue. 
I'm also running out a bit more cerulean. So that sort of runs through the back of that boat here, a bit more blue into the edge of that shadow, the edge of this boat, all the way down. A bit more cerulean, just to make the boat slightly stronger. Take that all the way across. Now I'm going to dip into some light red, a bit stronger light red, and some burnt, burnt umber. So it's brown, like a warm brown, very warm brown. Let's get some of this on. Again, right up into that, that shadow. Just have to soften that shadow off a little bit. Nice bit of brown, a bit more brown. Perhaps a bit of burnt sienna, uh, a bit of Payne's grey in it, just to darken it. Just a bit of Payne's grey in that, in that brown. So as we're coming across, just going to give it some direction just with the brush. Take it into those areas where we put the blue. just to suggest that this sort of beachy land perhaps comes a little bit higher up behind that boat on both sides. <clears throat> Let's continue this idea all the way through to link that shadow into this color. So I'm coming slightly more vertical with the mark making. And again, more vertical still. A bit darker again, a bit more brown, a bit more burnt sienna, Payne's gray, keep calling it burnt sienna, I don't know why. To darken it up and making the marks a lot more vertical now. Taking it right into that shadow. I have a little bit of that actually at the back of the boats. Just to suggest that that bit of land sort of maybe links, links through at the back there. Now I'm going to do a little bit of flicking. Let's just mop some of this up. I want a bit more color in that foreground area. So let's go into some um, paints, strange some paints, burnt sienna. And I'm gonna flick some of that on the foreground here. So it's nice and warm. Just into that wet paint. Do the same with some paint gray. So again, this is just paint gray flicking it. into the foreground. Again, to sort of give that suggestion of pebbles or stones. Okay, let's clean my finger and clean the brush off. Take a little bit of white, just gonna flatten my board out a touch so I don't run it so much. So a bit of white again onto the brush. So just dipping it into some white paint. Same thing. Oops, need a bit more moisture in that. Let's do the same thing. Some white marks here and there. Because you don't want too many, just a few to brighten up the foreground a little bit. Okay, clean that off. 
I'm going to take a bit of um, the cerulean again, fairly neat. Just want to run a bit of blue through this background area, up behind the boats, just to um, give the idea we've got a bit of water in the distance here. Just link that all the way through. So that was just cerulean blue. <clears throat> okay. Oops. Headbutt the uh, thing's not good. So I'm going to take my light red again. Just a bit of light red onto the brush. And just put a few drawing marks in. So we've got those chains, which I'm going to give the suggestion of those kind of running, those rusty chains. Perhaps we've got some marks. Just in this foreground area. Just to help break up some of these uh, pits of color. Just another one linking those two. Clean the brush off. Now I need a few darker ones. I'm just going to do that with the um, Daniel Smith black. So again, just dipping it straight into the tube. Just get a nice strong bit of color on the on the brush. And then use that to just give me some very strong dark indications of something going on. Whilst the paint's still wet, so it's still got time to bleed into one another. Let's run that all the way through that line. Let's make this line a bit stronger here. This rope or whatever it is, a bit of seaweed. Just some dark marks. Just the odd dark mark here and there. Okay, now I need to get the mask in. Let's put that away. I'm getting paint all over me here. <clears throat> so I'm just going to detail up <coughs> the mast and the <coughs> excuse me, the bit of the sail. So let's use some of the red that we used previously, just a dirty red. So I'm just gonna get this bit in first, which is the, the sail element of the mast. I'm quite sure what it's called. <clears throat> so that kind of comes down. Then we've got this really strong red element from the top, do that as one mark. Um, and perhaps we'll have just the odd few flicks of red, a bit on the body, just to detail up the body. Uh, we need a nice dark bit of color for the mast. Let's mix that cerulean blue and the dark grey together. Just using the rigger. Again, I'm just going to make an indication of the, the mask kind of coming down from the top. I'm not really fussed if it's totally straight. Kind of 
and it comes down to the boat there. And then same, oh, same on this one, just to put a big blob there, that'll have to be a bit of detail in the distance. So let's fill this mast element in. Let's just disguise that with, I don't know, maybe some ropes or something. Put some internal shapes in there. Go a bit darker. So some of the panes grey and a bit brown together, just to get some of these really dark internal shapes in. Perhaps there's a few bits of detail in this boat. Again, some rope. Bits of seaweed on the rope. A few bits of rigging and whatnot. couple of indications of ropes or um, wires. Some other little bits of something. Got this window, let's just pop that in. Show little dark bits just on the edge. Going to shore up the edge of this this hull a little bit, make that a bit more positive. Just a few little final marks. And then maybe in the distance. Just a few blue, bluey grey marks, just to suggest the odd, I don't want too many, just the odd window. Uh, just some very small suggestions of verticals. Too many. Okay, and then just finally, a little bit more of the cerulean blue. Very neat. And I'm just gonna put in the odd bit of blue just within that shadow shape, just to suggest something going on within the shadow. A little bit of color. And I'll do the same with a little bit of light red in there as well. It's got a bit of some other color in there. Just a few dots and dashes. Okay, and I think that'll probably do us for this session. Thank you.